Hello again, it's Trevor here and this video is all about revising for online exams whilst you're studying at home. This is an area of concern for many, many students and they ask me how can I help them revise for exams in an effective, time effective, but also an effective way in terms of their learning and of course passing their exams with high marks. So I've been thinking about this and it boils down to four key steps. The first step is planning for your online exam. So this means things like understanding what the exam requirements are firstly and how many exams you've got. So I would suggest making a list of the exams that you are facing during your course. For each of those exams, think about the format. So obviously they're going to be online so you'll need access to a computer of some sort. But what sort of format questions will you be asked in that exam? Will they be multiple choice questions, what some people shorten as MCQs? Will they be long form answers, more like um, essay type uh, questions and answers that you'll need to provide? Or will they be shorter answers, but not quite multiple choice, where you might have to uh, answer in terms of a couple of sentences, for example. Maybe you have to write a report or an essay. I've got a video about how to do that, but maybe you're going to be timed constrained in writing that essay or report. And so the academics involved will be calling that your online exam. And after that, you've written that, you might have to upload that through um, anti-plagiarism system, such as Turnitin, for example. So think also about the time limits you have for that exam. Maybe it's a two hour, maybe it's two and a half hours, maybe it's three hours, whatever it is, you need to know. So list the exams you've got, make sure you understand the format of those exams and think about the time limits you have in those exams and any other special requirements that are relevant to your subject. Then once you understand what your challenges are, you can create a good revision uh, schedule. So that schedule looks at the exams, when are those exams going to be, for example, how long will they be, and what do you need to do between then and now in order for you to prepare well. So I'm going to give you some further tips about that in a minute. First thing though, you need to do is think about where you're going to do your exam revision. So your exam revision environment. Some of you might have your own uh, room like an office or study at home that you can dedicate to purely doing your studying and uh, exam revision in that space. But whatever the space is, perhaps you're sharing your home with other people. Perhaps you've got children at home. Perhaps you share your home with other students who are in a similar situation to you. Whatever that situation is, you need some basic requirements. You need a flat working surface, a table, a desk, the floor perhaps, perhaps a stool or a deep windowsill. Uh, whatever it is, you need that flat space, that table space if you can, to spread your um, work on to help you. Things like your laptop or computer or tablet, um, your pads of paper, pens, pencils, rulers, calculators, anything like that, textbooks, journals, past exam papers, um, all those things that are going to help you in your exam. If you're living in a shared accommodation, perhaps there's uh, noise outside your study space. Perhaps there's noise inside your home. Perhaps there's noise outside your home. Perhaps there's people running around in your home, watching TV, playing games, making a noise through their day-to-day -day lives. Perhaps you live near a busy road or there's roadworks or construction work going on outside. So if that's the case, perhaps you need some headphones to drown out that sound, or perhaps you need some earphones or earbuds to help you concentrate and focus on your online learning work here. 
You also need, because it's going to be an online exam, you need access to that. So you need a laptop or computer or a tablet to help you do that. So you'll need some space in your revision environment to set that laptop up so you can practice and get familiar with it. So of course you'll need things like access to the Wi-Fi, you'll need a router to enable that access or perhaps a satellite dish or whatever it is that enables you to get Wi-Fi into your home. You'll also need to prepare your housemates or your family depending on who you live with at the moment when you're doing the revision, you need to tell them that you're doing that revision. You're getting ready to be um, left alone and to enable you to fully concentrate on that revision work. So tell your housemates, tell your family, please, 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 during these times, I'm going to be sat here at this table or in that room or on this desk over here and please don't disturb me. Also make sure that you keep healthy in terms of your physical health but also your mental health and to help you do that make sure you have enough sleep, make sure you eat properly, make sure you stay hydrated with sufficient uh, amounts of water throughout the days, make sure you take exercise and make sure that you program into your revision schedule adequate breaks. So maybe after every 20, 25, 30 minutes, you take a short five minute break just to break your um, time up during the day. Make sure you have lunch and dinner breaks, but also over the week, make sure you have half a day or a day free from revision to just recharge your personal batteries and refresh yourself from that revision so you don't get too jaded. The second step is to actually do the revision and to practice your online exam. So here you've already created a time plan, a Gantt chart, um, an activity schedule, different names for basically the same thing. You have a list of activities uh, down your sheet of paper or on your spreadsheet and across the top you have the time between the first exam and whatever the time is now. So I like to work in days of the week. So I might have a weekly uh, Gantt chart time schedule with the activities I need to complete at different times during that week. And then I like a bigger scale, sort of a monthly scale plan of actions that I need to do to enable me to revise sufficiently for all my exams. You choose the time sort of uh, frequency that is useful for you, depending on how much time you have until you are facing those exams. So you create that time plan and I always like to um, treat my revision as uh, something like a job. That's my full-time job uh, whilst I'm fully concentrated and fully dedicated to doing my revision. So that spills over to what you tell your housemates or your family as well. You know, between nine and five, I'm gonna be working here, doing my revision, so please don't disturb me. We can get together during the weekend when I have my break time or after five o'clock in the evening, I'll come back to you and uh, we can do our social activities then. So you need to be disciplined. You need to face that like employment, you need to, um, realize that it's important, you need to be dedicated and committed to it if you're going to succeed. Because those people that you live with or are your friends, uh, your mobile phone, your social media accounts, whatever, will be trying to vie for your time and will no doubt at some point interrupt you. That's natural. So your dedication, your commitment to your revision will uh, enable you to keep on track according to your time plan and uh, do a good job. So then you need to identify what you actually need to revise. So there's ways around uh, focusing upon this uh, to be most efficient in your learning. So firstly, think about the learning outcomes for that exam, for the course that you are being examined on. What learning outcomes are going to be tested 
as part of the exam. And make sure you understand that because those are kind of the, the way markers, the targets for which you are aiming to make sure that you can achieve those learning outcomes and the exam will be testing you to make sure that you do fully understand those learning outcomes and can actually achieve them. You might be able to look at past exam papers and spot trends or patterns in the sorts of questions that have come up or the sorts of topics that have appeared before in previous exams. Now, you have to be a bit careful here because exams um, do change, the exam questions will change every exam period, but you might find particular topics that come up and you might find over time there are differently worded questions but they're basically being asked on the same topic so you know right i have to focus for sure on these topic areas because they are highly likely to come up but beware don't solely focus on those predicted topics because for example there might be a different member of staff involved in that course this time compared to last year and so that member of staff will naturally write exam questions differently and perhaps choose a different topic altogether that's never appeared on the exam paper before also of course importantly you need to audit your own knowledge and identify your gaps in your learning and understanding in that topic area so you look at the whole course, you look at the learning outcomes and you think about, right, where are my strengths? Where are my weaknesses in terms of what I understand about this course? And you can tailor your revision according to your strengths and your weaknesses in that understanding. So if your time is short, perhaps it's most beneficial to focus on the weaknesses in the topic areas that you think are most likely to come up in the exam, for example. If you've got more time, then you can focus on all your weaker areas in that course and focus your revision on boosting your knowledge and plugging those gaps. And whilst you're doing that, during your revision, use as many props uh, as you can to help you get that knowledge and understanding into your uh, brains. So perhaps um, things like um, pieces of card with the key points written out, the key highlighted points, use coloured felt tip pens and highlighters and sticky notes, uh, anything that is going to keep that knowledge in your head whilst you're doing the exam. If you've got lots of equations to understand and to remember, perhaps it helps you to actually write out those equations a few times and get familiar with using them before the exam as part of your revision. You might find it helpful if, especially it's a long equation that you need to remember, that you write out the equation and you leave some gaps and you come back to those gaps and try and remember what were in those gaps as a test to yourself before the exam properly. And it's always, always, always a good idea if you've got time and you should in your time plan for revision to practice answering real exam questions. So try and get hold of past exam papers and to begin with, just see how many of those without looking back at your notes you can answer. And then any gaps in the questions that you find most difficult you can look back at your notes and the textbooks and the online learning materials and fill those gaps up. Then once you've done that, leave it for a while and come back to that exam and try again, but within the time limit that is set for that exam. And of course, without using your notes or textbooks or online learning materials. So you're imposing the strict exam conditions just like you'll be facing in the exam. Now this is good because it focuses you and identifies any weak areas of your knowledge, but it also reduces your anxiety because you know what's coming. You build confidence. You know, oh right, I can actually answer these questions in the time I'm given. 
or perhaps you can't answer those questions in the time that's been given to you, but you've still got time to go back and fill in the gaps and to hone your answers accordingly. It also gets your body physically ready and prepared to produce the answers in that time constrained uh, environment. So you might not be used to actually sitting on your laptop and writing for two or three hours, depending on how long the exam is. So it gets you used to being sat there and actually thinking and writing your answers into the computer. So that gives you a lot of confidence and boosts your morale because you then understand what you do and you don't know. And hopefully you can focus on the positive and say, well, actually I can answer these questions. I can sit there for two or three hours. It's all okay. I've got enough water. I've got all the equipment I need, all the technology works and you build that confidence and so reduce the stress and anxiety on you. Step three then, before the exam, the day before the exam, check all your equipment. Is it working? Is your Wi-Fi working? Um, is your laptop working properly? Uh, have you got the proper desk and chair and any other equipment that you need? Your calculator, does it need batteries? Um, uh, is your laptop fully charged? Uh, the battery in it fully charged just in case there's a power cut or anything like that. Um, do you know how many drinks you'll need during that exam period? So get the cups of water or bottles of water lined up ready. So check your IT is all working correctly. Make sure you've got pens and paper and calculators or to hand ready in the space in which you're going to do the exam. And um, that enables you to get in the mindset of the exam. And you know it's already there, so you don't have to stress about it the day of the exam. Also make sure that any software that you need is downloaded and fully working and functional on your computer. If you're doing online exams, there might be special exam software that monitors things like your mouse movements and the clicks of your mouse and what you're typing. Uh, to prevent cheating, for example. Make sure that's all working properly. So then do a, a last minute check on your exam environment, the place in which you are actually going to do the exam. So this should be probably the same space that you've been doing your revision in. Again, remind your housemates, look, I'm going to be doing the exam between 9 and 12 o'clock tomorrow morning, so please don't disturb me. Remind yourself of the exam requirements, so especially the time limit and any special requirements that the exam is imposing on you. For example, you may not be able to use textbooks, dictionaries, calculators, any other equipment apart from your computer. Also, make sure you eat properly and drink enough water, especially the day before the exam and during uh, the morning of the exam. If the exam's uh, later on in the morning, make sure you have a sufficient breakfast, make sure you've drunk some water, not too much so you'll need to be running to the toilet every five minutes, but sufficient to keep hydrated. Make sure you take some exercise the day before exam so you're not feeling too uh, lethargic or run down whilst you're doing the exam itself the next day. So the exam's here, so step four during the exam, start when everything is ready at the proper time for the exam. So if the exam starts slap bang at nine o'clock, make sure you're there, make sure your laptop is already switched on and you've got all the materials to hand that you are allowed and that you need. Really importantly, read the exam paper instructions very carefully and make sure that you follow them especially the time limit, especially word counts, especially the format of your answers and things like that. And make sure that you try and answer all the questions that you are required to. But I would say, if you are able to, skip forward after you've read all the questions 
Answer the questions that you find easiest to answer. This does two things. Firstly, it boosts your confidence because you've already written something. And that gives you much more confidence than staring at a blank screen. Also, because it's an easy answer to you, you've already gained some marks. So that's a, like a double boost to your confidence. But importantly, it's getting you nearer to the pass grade that you need to pass that exam. So if something happens, you've already got some marks hopefully in the bag and uh, you can go on then by definition to the harder to answer questions, which by definition are harder to answer and so you're likely to get less marks for. If you get stuck, however, don't panic. Just go back and read what you have written already. This kind of gives your brain a little bit of a, a, a chance to recover. And by the time you've read through what you've got written down there already, your brain might have populated itself with the answer that you need um, where you were stuck before. If um, you really can't think of anything, perhaps leave a gap if you've got time, a physical gap in the answer sheet and move on to the next question. When you've got time at the end of the exam, come back to that gap and you never know, you might have thought about the answer. If you're really stuck and it's getting towards the end of the exam and you're running out of time, just do a brain dump and try and write anything you can think of that is slightly relevant to that question in terms of your answer. You never know, there might be one or two things that you write down and the examiner, when they're marking the exam, looks at that and goes, well, actually I can give that, give you a couple of marks here. And that just might be the difference between a pass and a fail. You can do it. I've got other videos about how to write essays and reports, if that's the sort of thing that you're going to face um, during your online exam. Have a look at the links. I've uh, put a link in, in the movie uh, above. If you like this uh, film, please put a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And really, really, really good luck with your online exams. You can do it, I'm sure. Thanks very much. Bye for now.